Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a get ready with me, in case you didn't read the title before clicking on this video, which would be odd. It has been a hot minute since I've done one of these. I like doing makeup videos, even though I don't know what I'm talking about, for the most part. I've watched enough Tati Westbrook to make me feel dangerous, but not enough to profess to be even at an intermediate level. Okay, so uh, you're, you may learn something, you may not, or maybe we'll just spend 20 minutes doing our makeup together. So grab a cup of something to sip on and feast your eyes. And I will show you how I achieved this mostly crunchy, let's call it this scrunchy makeup look. Without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. All right, let's see how quickly we can get this done, because who knows how long she's gonna have. <laughs> Why, when I do my hair like this, do I always feel like I look like Jonathan Van Ness? First things first, get the hair up out of the way. Harness your inner Benjamin Franklin. I've already applied a light oil to my face because your girl needs all the moisture she can get. I'm gonna go in with the NYX Full Coverage Orange Concealer to help combat the circles under my eyes. I have naturally thin skin underneath my eyes, so I use this regularly, but if you are really roughing it with a baby right now, might I recommend looking into some color correction? It could really help combat the purples that you tend to get from lack of sleep. I opt for really thin layers, especially with something as strong as like orange concealer. I would rather do a thin layer and then repeat it if necessary, than do a ton of it. Especially because I'm just hanging around the house today. This is not like my full glam sitting down to record look. This is just enough to make me feel a little bit more human, even though it's already one o'clock in the afternoon. Next, I'm gonna go in with my Beauty Care Naturals uh, Second Skin Color Match Foundation. I am quite smitten with this product. I usually do like a pump and a half and then I, this is something that I saw Tati Westbrook do forever ago. She added a couple drops of oil, I'll do three this time, to help kind of, I don't know if it breaks up the foundation or what it does, and I always use like a makeup brush to stir it in. Um, but to me, it makes it more blendable, way more blendable. So especially when I'm doing some more full coverage makeup, like on days when I'm recording, especially main channel recordings, I will do this with my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation or something of the like, and then I just... <laughs> Now, I'm actually gonna try something today that I have not done yet. Recently, I was sent um, some stuff from Be Kind Beauty Products. Their stuff is radically clean. It's so it's so good. But one of the things that they sent over was this. Um, and I'll go ahead and link this with, I think I get a discount code with them. I'll let you guys know, you'll have to check it out down there. But you know the whole K-Beauty thing with this, the spatula? If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, women are applying their makeup with a like a metal it almost looks like a what's the thing you apply frosting with an offset spatula <laughs> kind of has that vibe looks like a butter knife with like no aggressive parts but basically they're smoothing it out on their skin like this and look how good this color match is on me so they're starting off their foundation with this and then going in and blending it afterwards so my mind was like, wait, what do I have that could work? I'm certainly not gonna use a butter knife because it has, still has the aggressive stuff attached and I'm not buying a new makeup product to like make this happen. And I remembered that Be Kind sent this over to me. So we're gonna try this where we are going to spread out the foundation as much as possible and then blend it with beauty blender afterwards. I have so much product left on the back. I never have this much product left. What do I do? Wait, if this works. <laughs> I'm gonna be ticked for the amount of product that I've wasted not knowing this. Okay, pretty decent. Let's blend. Okay, I think we might be onto something here. Especially after I went through with the makeup sponge, it's like a very even application. Are we actually focused on my face or are we focused on the background? Now I'm gonna go in with the Beauty Care Naturals um, concealer in shade three. Oh, the shade for my foundation is number two. She used to have a pot concealer, and by used to, I mean I still have it, but I've owned it for a really long time, so I'm embarrassed to show you it, and I probably shouldn't own it anymore because it's probably expired. Uh, but she switched over to this. It has the little doe foot applicator, which is super reminiscent of uh, Shape Tape, just like, you know, with a heck of a lot of cleaner ingredients. And I will say, Beauty Care Naturals is my favorite clean foundation, without a shadow without a shadow of a doubt. It truly is buildable. It matches my skin phenomenally well. It's clean. Like I don't feel bad nuzzling my baby after I apply it, you know what I mean? And then I'm gonna go in with my ring finger so I'm not pulling on this skin here at all and gently kind of tap it into place. And then do the same with my eyelid. I actually use 
concealer almost as like my eyeshadow base. That might be the baby. That's the baby. I'm gonna blend this real quick and then try to get her to go back down if I can. She tends to have pretty interrupted naps, which is rough. I think we're blended enough that nothing's gonna dry like in a gloss. See you in a sec. Okay, well, that turned into <laughs> a far longer experience. <laughs> it is now 2.15 p.m. as opposed to a.m which would be a very strange time to be putting on my makeup. And it's kind of a good thing I let it settle for a minute because I think I put too much oil on my eyes. So the concealer actually gunked up a little on me. Feeling pretty good about the coverage. Let me just double check. Yeah, honestly, this is what I love about this foundation is it makes my skin look like my skin. Just looks perfectly normal. Just with a lot more even coverage. So now I'm gonna go ahead, that mirror behind me is cracking me up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my um, Honest Cream Blush in Peony Pink. My lovely cousin got this for me and put it on with a brush and I try to focus on the apples of my cheeks I know so many people will do a bunch of blush back here but that doesn't seem realistic to me like you don't blush here you blush here you know what I mean it'll actually dust a little across my nose that's where you would naturally like redden if you've been in the sun I'm probably doing this out of order because <laughs> why not but now I'm gonna go in with the Neutrogena mineral shears loose powder foundation to just kind of gently set everything and this is in the shade natural ivory one thing that drives me nuts about this and i've used this for years is that the label is on the bottom side the holes are here so you have to like turn it label side up to use it, it probably doesn't make sense to do this after i've done the cream blush but this is how my brain works you apply the cream products first and then the powder products and i'm just gonna gently dust this over my entire face and I like how it makes that cheek tint just like a little bit more subtle. Carry it down the neck. And now I'm gonna put the powder cheek stuff on. You know, to like reinforce the blush. I'm gonna go in with my Ofra blush in the color Charm. And this time, I'm gonna use a fluffier brush that is absolutely <laughs> filthy. And again, just focus on the apples of my cheeks and blend out just a little. I'm all for a good dramatic makeup. I love it. But if I'm just putzing around the house or if I'm actually gonna see people in real life, I don't want the like harsh, intense look that oftentimes I will go for if I'm filming. I shouldn't say harsh and intense. Uh, probably more, slightly more dramatic than my everyday look. Now I'm gonna go in with my Tarte Park Avenue Princess bronzer. And I actually kind of just vaguely, I'm not hardcore contouring, and I will actually pull it into my cheeks as well. It's just enough to give a light contour right here but then blending it into the blush. A little bit up here, and if there's anything left on the brush, I will just kind of darken down here a little bit. That is it for the face, so now I'm gonna move on to eyes. I have the Travel Case Smashbox um, Photo Matte Eyes. These are kind of generally the colors within it. The reason that I like this palette, one, is because it's super tiny, which makes it more affordable, and two, it's because of this color right here. I have been known to use foundation as my eyeshadow before because basically all I want to do is make my eyelids the same color as the rest of my face not the generous red that they are before or the uh, overtired look I just want them to match and using the uh, Real Techniques Instapop shade brush so it's a nice big flat applicator I'm basically gently brushing in and pressing in the powder onto my lid so it doesn't make a big impact it's not supposed to it's supposed to just make my skin look like skin and if I need to if I'm seeing any redness I will actually carry it up onto my brow bone as well. Now I'm gonna go in with a compact brush. Probably do this one. It's the crease brush from Real Techniques, the Instapop one, and grab a slightly darker color but not too dark. So I'm gonna go for this brown right here and pop it right into the corner right there. It's gonna look crazy for a minute but trust the process. I'm gonna do this one right here. What I'm gonna slowly do is I'm gonna pull the pigment up using this crease brush. And because this one tapers so nicely, it actually forms like a little bit of a pointed tip. So I'm gonna dip my brush back into that same color and carry it down onto my lower lash line. So we're creating this really nice C shape effect. Here's where we're at so far. Very subtle, very simple, natural colors. Of course, your eyelids would never naturally look like this, but this color exists in the wild, so we can therefore call it a natural color. Do you like my reasoning? <laughs> now we get a fluffy brush. Uh, how about this? A nice rounded blending brush that by no means has other eyeshadows still on it. <laughs> 
And because I already have this color in my crease, I'm gonna opt for something a shade lighter. Let's go in with this one right here and put it over the top of that crease that I just created. So I'm gonna start right here, almost not quite on top of it, but just on the inside of it and then blend it out. And I kind of do like a swirly combo. Not quite a mascara face, but it's close, right? So you can see how this side has just ended up being all softened uh, compared to this one, but it still has that depth of color in that outer edge. If I keep going and I want some more depth to it, I'll go back in with that crease brush and pack in a little bit more of that dark brown powder to create more depth there, but I think I'm good for now. Oh, I love this so much. It's so soft, so subtle, great for every day, and I can do it super quick while the baby's sleeping. Mostly. Now I'm gonna go in with my Tubes & Co. Um, this is a clean makeup line. I really, really enjoy this eyeliner. In fact, this might be my favorite pencil liner from a clean beauty company uh, in the color black. And I'm gonna gently line both my upper and lower lash line. I start in the outer corner and almost just make a little dash type mo uh, movement. I will be going back in with a brush afterwards to blend it so I'm not super concerned about cohesion, the only thing I'm concerned about is making one section too thick. And I'm gonna do it on the lower line as well. See how it just makes the eye pop a little bit more. Look at me, like, talking like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no ma'am. Oh dear. Okay. She looks a mess. By keeping the eyeliner on the outer portions of my eye, it tends to, from what I understand, open up the eye quite a bit more. So when I'm feeling super tired or the baby didn't sleep all through the night or my eyeballs are looking extra puffy, I don't wanna carry the eyeliner all the way to my inner eye. I wanna make sure my eyes look as alert as possible because the brain, lights are on but nobody's home. So we're just... That was all my makeup brushes. Where I'm gonna go in with a flat brush and blend this out. I'm not super concerned at this point with making anything overly perfect. We are just smudging it out. Let me get up close so you can see my fine lines and my fine technique. Usually I pull my, I hold my lid like this. I get it? It's still looking a little harsh to me, so I'm actually gonna go in with my finger and just gently kind of drag and pick up a little bit of the product so it's not coming across too dark. So here it is all smoothed out, smudged out, and here it is looking like the rough little dash shapes. <laughs> My favorite is this just like mountain moment. Blending fixes not everything but a lot. And when I'm doing this I'm not pulling the eyeliner any further than like the middle of my pupil. So I'm really trying to focus on the outer C of my eye. I just love this eyeliner. I find that so much of the clean eyeliners don't stay it put at all. So I like this one because it doesn't transfer to my lid throughout the day. We still have that little mountain effect happening. Here's how we're gonna fix that. <laughs> this is foolproof. I'm telling you, you do not have to be good at makeup to make it eventually get there. I'm gonna go back in with this same palette and what I could do is I could go for this dark color right here. It's almost like a, a gray brown or I could go for this one right here. I think I'm gonna go for the gray brown. Using that same brush that already has the eyeliner on it and pick up just a touch of product and put that directly over all of the eyeliner that I just smudged. Not only will this brown soften the overall black, because black will just draw attention to absolutely everything. Uh, it'll soften it, but also help it blend with the other browns I already have going on in my eye. Kind of pulling it out just a little bit to create a pseudo cat wing eyeliner. Nope, cat eye. Here she is. Winged eyeliner. Cat wing. And doing the same thing on the upper lash line as well. There we are with this one. You can see how, I don't know, for me it just looks like it softens everything. Also conveniently putting powder over cream product helps it to set a little bit. All right, next time. I still do this towards the end too, to kind of go through and pick up any additional product. There is a hair. I will just kind of press or do gentle smudges with my fingers. Here's where I jump around a little bit. I'm actually gonna head to brows. Mascara might be my favorite part of the makeup process and I like to take my time with that. So I usually save that for last. Also, I like to stick it in between, uh, like behind my knee pit, you know, ditch, um, to warm it up a little because then it applies more easily. It's those weird things that you do 
when no one's looking and then you admit them out loud that you're like, that sounds weird. But I always like put it in my pocket or stuff it in my leg just to, yeah, for a better application. Okay, I'm using uh, Ulta Beauty's brow tint in the color light and this is just, it's honestly such a great color for me. Just gonna go in and get some feathering I do have pretty decently thick brows. I don't have a lot of gaps in them. So at this point, it's just to kind of darken them just a touch and create a little bit of continuity. I do have a little bit of a gap right here. So I will try to focus on that a little bit. And instead of going to try to find a pencil that I probably don't even have, I'm gonna take the tip of this and press it down for a little bit more of a concentrated area and then blend it out. Maybe just a little pop, just a dabble, do ya? Why did I choose to waggle my brow when I'm applying brow product? With that in place, I'm gonna lock it in with Beauty Care Naturals Clear Brow Product. I, I mean, it's no longer clear because I use it all the time over, over the top of colored products. I love this stuff. I keep coming back to it. It gives the same, what's it the same as? I don't know, some expensive brow product that I have. It does the same exact thing, but these are cleaner ingredients. So why not make the switch? I do have a code with Beauty Care Naturals I think it's Jamie Wolf for BCN. We'll get you 10% off. So if you would like to try out some clean makeup or see if I'm telling the truth about these products, <laughs> you can give them an order. I will link it down below as well as the code. Gonna feather this in lightly. I like to lift up my brows with this and then go back through because I can't do the laminated. For, I can't do it. And go back through and just gently drag the tip of my applicator over the top to kind of smooth them in the correct direction. Right? So she's... Why does this one look darker? It doesn't look darker in person. It still looks dark. Okay, well, we're gonna go back in on top of the laminated brows with some more of this to even it out because it looks fine in person, but I look lopsided on camera. You should follow me for more makeup tutorials. Better. This is why I could never do like fully laminated brows. I mess up too often for that to be a wise idea. So then you have to like chisel it off and start again. We'll say it's even enough, right? And now, CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean. Is it that clean? Debatable, okay? Super debatable. Is it cleaner than their other stuff? Yes. Is this my favorite mascara that I've been using for over a decade? Also, yes. So the fact that they have a cleaner version is just dandy by me. I cannot seem to find any clean mascaras that are volumizing. They're all lengthening. In fact, I would love to use Beauty Care Naturals mascara. It's su it's quite lengthening. It's delightful. But I already have long lashes, so I just want them to look thicker. Oh, and there's the baby. Can we get the other eye done before she like gets into a full rage? Truthfully, the reason that I always do eyeliner um, and smudge it around when I'm doing my makeup, uh, one, is because it covers up the fact that I'm not good at this. Uh, and two, I am notorious for getting mascara on my eyelid almost every time. So doing that there kind of hides some of the mascara bits and helps them to blend in just a little bit better. <laughs> oh, she's big mad now. All right, we're gonna pause here. I'll come back in just a sec. Almost there, folks. We are almost there. Now for lips. My favorite go-to has always been and will always be Lolita. Just, it's such a good, like slightly dark nude neutral that pairs so well with so much what I wear. So I got the eyeliner. This is not eyeliner. This is not eyes. These are lips. Therefore, I have lip liner. <laughs> and I'm gonna slightly overline them just a tish. I have lips on, that are on the smaller end, so I like just a little overlining. We're not lying to people, we're just giving the illusion of fullness. Okay, now that you look good and proper crazy, the uh, matte liquid lipstick, I think that's what this is. I don't know. <laughs> the label wore off. Gonna go in with that to fill in the rest. And now I'm gonna go fix up my hair. Say hasta la vista, Benjamin Franklin. And I will be back to um, show you the completed look. Cause right now we're so, we're so close, but we just need some crunchy girl, dry shampoo and quick curl. Ah, there we go. Okay, admittedly the dry shampoo is not all the way soaked in yet. So just, should I finish the video like this? <laughs> Listen, when you try to go crunchy with things, it's not gonna be the same as when you're using mainstream things that work perfect, okay? Because we're used to the, the non-crunchy things, so we have to make some allowances. 
okay? I love a quick little like five minute refresh on my hair. So that's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for indulging me in a makeup video. I don't do these too often, but I have so much fun doing them, even though I have no idea what I'm talking about. So. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any crunchy products that you recommend for people's faces, <laughs> drop that in the comments below. And be sure to check out the description box for any of the products I can link. I will try to toss down there. And until next time, bye guys. Mm -hmm.